Hi, it's Pastor Paul L. Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. It is triumphant Thursday. We thank God we've made it through the middle of the week, and now we're pressing our way towards the end, and we thank God that He is always with us. I want to say, let us all do our very best to make sure that we take care of not only ourselves and keep ourselves safe, but others. Remember this virus, it, it has a way of going around and doing certain things, and let's pray that we not only take care of ourselves, but we take Take care of those who can be impacted because we may have uh, been a carrier of something. Remember, let's take care of those who are young and those who are the more vulnerable ones who are part of our uh, population and those who are part of our sphere of influence. Let's make sure we do our best. And let's just thank God that he gives us the opportunity to show his love and to show his mercy to all that we meet. Today, I want to ask that you would uh, look with me into the word of God out of 2 Chronicles, the 34th chapter, verses 1 through 7. Very powerful text that speaks to us about how God calls a young boy into leadership, how he becomes a king even at the ripe young age of eight years old. Can you imagine that? Someone in leadership at the age of eight. It lets us see, and as we read this text, that Josiah comes into leadership at age eight. Even though he is young, God has done something great for him. He has entrusted him with great wealth, great value, but he's also surrounded him with those who would assist him as he makes decisions. Now, all of us, if we were placed in the hands of an eight-year-old, we would say, what in the world will happen to us? Will they get us engaged in wars and in folly that doesn't make any kind of sense? Will they act childish? Well, Josiah has some trusted advisors, those who guided them, those who helped him. The text lets us see that he became king at age eight, but he reigned for over 31 years. That lets us see that he grew into his position. He grew into what God had called him to be. There were those who entrusted great wealth and great value into sharing with him the right things to do. I think it's because he understood that as he watched even as a child, saw what was going on, there were those who were right by his side. You know, in all of our lives, we need to have someone who's by our side, someone who's a trusted advisor, someone who understands good public policy, someone who understands economic. Now remember, he's eight years of age, and how can he be given so much? Well, God gives a lot to those whom he can trust. This text lets us see that during his uh, reign, he did things that were right in the sight of God. It goes to show if you train up a child when they're young, as they grow older, they won't depart from it. Josiah was that king who wanted to do what was right in the sight of God. We find out that as he went forth and as he led his people, God blessed him because he was seeking the God of his ancestor, David. He knew about the leadership of David. He knew about how God had done great exploits, how God had done great things. When the king puts his heart in the hand of Almighty God. Wouldn't it be great if this world in which we live, all of those who are in leadership, would put their heart in the hand of Almighty God, would listen to the word of God. I guess then we wouldn't have troops that might be deployed to stop a war that's about to happen or an invasion from some other country. We must remind ourselves that as God speaks to Josiah, God speaks to him and speaks to those who are around him. It lets us see that the Bible tells us that whenever we find ourselves in a multitude of counselors, we can find great wisdom. That's the reason that decisions cannot be made on, on just a knee-jerk experience. That's the reason why we have to be careful what we utter from our mouths, because whatever comes out of our lips clearly displays what's inside of our heart. We can see how this has happened throughout history. We can see how it happens in the text. The thing that is so important is that Josiah followed God and he got rid of all the idols. It's important in our lives to make sure that we get rid of all the idols, that we make sure that those who have leadership are not practicing paganistic worships, those who are not giving themselves over to their personal God of personal wealth and finance and prestige. But we must hear what God has to say to us, the God of the Bible, the one who speaks to us, says he got rid of all the idols. And God says, I can use someone who is willing to listen to me and listen to my voice. You'll be a blessing to your whole village, to your whole country, to your whole kingdom, and you'll be a blessing to the world at large. May all of us pray for those who are in leadership that God will allow them to be a blessing from the local level all the way to the national level, and even to those who are leading countries around. 
you know, we must make sure that we can all come to the table where God is seated. And then we can find that true peace, that peace that surpasses all understanding. An eight-year-old boy leads them into glorious times. We need God to lead us into some glorious times of serving him and honoring him and giving the people what the people need. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And I'll see you on tomorrow. Remember, in this year of 2022, God has a blessing in store for you. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org, and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Okay.